Hi, this is Francisco Pular Vidal with FKI Quality. Today I would like to speak with you about calculating the capability of a process. That is, how much benefit a business will get from the process, how much satisfaction a customer will get from a product or service. Now, there are different methods for calculating this. The most widespread one is just the calculation of percentage. What is the percentage of the good results that we get? We call that the yield of a process. But in addition to this, in Six Sigma, we also study the Sigma method. The Sigma method has one requirement, and that is that a process be normally distributed. With that in mind, I would like to uh, describe to you uh, various stages of um, a process that we're going to uh, say that we own a pizza delivery business. And this pizza delivery business begins with a certain condition that we can um, measure as being normally distributed with an average of 30 minutes and a standard deviation of 3 minutes. Now, by uh, company policy or by the target that we have set for ourselves so that we may be competitive, we would like to be able to deliver this, uh, all of the pizza orders in 30 minutes or less. So this already gives us the three numbers that we need in order to calculate the capability of a process the way I just described it. Those numbers are the following. We're going to have something called an upper specification limit, which is 30 minutes. We also are going to have a process this, uh, that describes the delivery time of our pizza branch, which is normally distributed with an average of 30 minutes and a standard deviation of 3 minutes. So when we put this in, in graphical terms, which is always a good thing so we may understand what we're doing, it would look more or less like this. Let's say that this is the, the time of the order, right? So this is zero minutes. We order at this point. And we are going to use a timeline here to describe the time as it goes by. Let's say that over here we have the 30 minutes, which correspond to the limit. We mustn't go beyond this. So what this is giving us is that to this side, that would be an on-time delivery, and beyond that would be a late delivery, therefore a defective. Now, the distribution, this was the upper spec limit. The actual normal distribution with these parameters is going to look like this. Let's say um, that about here is where we have the 10 minutes mark, and over here is the 20 minutes mark, so that we may be more or less uh, uh, with, a, with a useful uh, timeline over here, and this one will be the 40 minutes mark. So if this is the process described with three minutes of standard deviation, a normal distribution would look like this. It's going to peak at where the average is, and that would be 30 minutes, and then it's going to go, uh, for the purposes of drawing it, as wide as three standard deviations, that will be three times three minutes, to the right and to the left of the average, which means that this distribution is going to look more or less like this. As a bell shape that extends up to 21 minutes over here, which that would be 30 minus 3 times 3, 9. 30 minus 9 is 21. And on this side, it's going to go all the way to 39 minutes. Now, with something like this, where it just so happens that the average is exactly the same as the upper specification limit, we almost don't need to make any calculations in, to, in order to know what is the yield and what is the percentage effective if we remember that the standard deviation, that rather, that the normal distribution is symmetric um, with respect to the average. That means that in this case, the same amount of um, uh, on time delivery is going to be, the, the amount of on time delivery is going to be the same as late delivery. It's, that is a 50 50. So this is a process that is operating at a sigma level of zero. If you go to any type of tables of sigma, yield, and defects per million opportunities, or DPMO, you will find the following numbers. For sigma of zero, from tables, you will find that the yield is going to be equal to 50%, and that DPMO 
is going to be equal to 500,000. 500,000, of course, means 50% of a million. Now, let's say that even though this is the starting position, we are in the context of Greenbelt work, which uh, rather Six Sigma work, which means that we are going to be running projects of improvement, either as a green belt, like I said before, or as a black belt, or any type of uh, person interested in improving processes. What if, for instance, we were able to accelerate the operation, maybe by performing certain tasks ahead of time, uh, and in some fashion uh, looking for non-value added tasks, and then taking those tasks out, those tasks out of the uh, overall process. Let's say that we were able to get to a normal distribution that, or, or rather a process that has an average that is faster. We could express that in this way. A normal distribution that has an average of 27 minutes. And let's say that we, for now, still have the same type of uh, standard deviation. That is, the variability embedded into the process hasn't changed. How would this then uh, help us in order to calculate the yield and the DPMO using the sigma method is as follows. The equation is going to be the same. So in this case, the sigma of our operation is simply going to be the same 30 minutes, which is the upper spec limit, minus the average, divided by the standard deviation. And that will give us a sigma of 1. Looking at the tables, we can get what is going to be the corresponding yield and the PMO. But before we do that, it's also useful to just get a, a visual idea of how is it that things are going to look like. If uh, we were to compare the first, uh, the, first, the diagram of the first situation with that of the second situation, what we're saying basically is that this curve has shifted to the left by three minutes. Why? Because the average is now 27 in which case you would have more or less something like this. If this is now 27 minutes, let's say somewhere here, that would mean that it's three more to the left. That means that this point over here is not gonna get all the way to 39, but rather to 36. And so that curve may very well look more or less, let's say like this. And on the other hand, this point is also gonna be shifted three more to the left, that would, be, that would mean that this curve is going to end more or less on, on 18, something like this. So what you have is that what originally had been this entire space over here to the left as a 50% um, of error or late deliveries, now it has become a much smaller portion of it. And the reason is because we have moved the curve towards the left. From tables, we can find what those numbers are. The table tells us that the yield is going to be equal to, for this type of performance, equal to 84.13%, which means that we have gone, you know, we have increased tremendously from what used to be uh, the, the whole half of the curve, 50% 50, um, uh, 50 late. If this is the yield, then it follows that, uh, in terms of percentage, the um, the defective proportion is going to be a little less than 16%, right? So that the two add up to uh, 100%. In fact, the DPMO value is going to be equal to 158,000 and a little bit more. In fact, you know, 655. So this is the number that we get once we, uh, the number of defective that, that, that we get uh, by accelerating the process. Now, could we accelerate it one more time? Well, let's, let's take a look. Let's assume that this is possible so that we may see another uh, uh, series of numbers. If we were to have something like this, let's say that we have uh, an acceleration, but also somehow we find a way to make the distribution um, more predictable. That is, that we have better control of our processes. Let's say that we're able to turn now this to a normal distribution that has an average of 24 minutes and a uh, standard deviation of two minutes. If this were the case, now we would have a sigma value, which is going to be substantially better. 
where the 30 minutes still stays the same. That is, that continues to be our corporate or company limit minus the 24 minutes of the average divided by the standard deviation. This is going to give us 6 divided by 2. And so now we find ourselves operating at a sigma level of 3, which is substantially better than anything that we had before. In this case, the tables also can be used in order to figure out what the yield is. Yield in this case is equal to 99 point. It's a very high value. Uh, 99 point 86 percent. And the DPMO is going to be uh, only 1,350 per million. So what we see here is that in this case what we have done comparatively speaking is we have accelerated this even further to the left. So now we are uh, having started with an average of uh, 30. We have been able to accelerate, kind of shave off time, six minutes. But in addition to that we also have made the distribution uh, narrower, more concentrated, more spiky if you would in, ter in visual terms. To the point that uh, actually it would be kind of hard to draw it here in, on top of all these curves. But what is left outside of the acceptability limits, that is what is left beyond 30 minutes, is just a very small fraction of, it's is, uh, is not even 1%, uh, it's definitely less than that. And uh, measured in millions, in parts per million, it gives us 1,350. So what we see is uh, how the sigma method can uh, complement uh, and uh, give us a different idea as to how we are progressing as we uh, run different type of projects in order to gain additional process capability. In conclusion, this diagram now shows us the comparison between the three processes from the point where we had started with a process that really wasn't very good, that is where the average was the same as the specification. So we had, the, the, if the specification is 30 for all, um, in all situations, in the first case we had that the curve also had an average of 30, that's why it's centered there. That's why it peaks there at 30. Now, the way that we draw these curves is that we multiply the standard deviation by three in order to get a visual impression as to uh, how wide they are and how they look like. So in the first case, we were multiplying three times three, which is nine, and that's the reason why the distribution went as far as 39 on the right and as far as 21 on the left. And so that's why we could see that half of it was already late and the other, only one half was on time. That would give us a yield of 50%. And in this case, a uh, defects per million opportunities of 500,000, as we saw in the prior diagrams. That is a, an operation that is working uh, with a performance capability of zero. Now, if through projects we're able to accelerate the operation in order to bring it, let's say, three minutes to um, uh, earlier uh, on the average, then the curve looks like this and you can see how the proportion that is beyond 30 minutes has been reduced substantially. In fact, this is now where we are be operating at sigma 1 of capability and the yield or proportion of on-time delivered pizza would be 84% and only about 16% uh, late. If we were to continue working through this, not only accelerating the process by three more minutes, but also making it more predictable, more repeatable, more consistent, by, uh, which would translate numerically into reducing the standard deviation from three to two. Now when we draw this, again, we multiply by three times the standard deviation, which is gonna give us a value of six. Three times two is equal to six. And so because we're starting from an average of 24, we only go six to the right, six to the left, which makes the, the, the tail, if you would, of the distribution, basically end at 30, giving us a very small proportion of late uh, deliveries. The meaning of this is that the yield now has increased to uh, all, almost that is visually identical to 100%. The value actually is 99.86% and the DPMO is only 1,350 per million. And that is how it looks like when we operate at a three sigma level. So you can see the comparison as through the work of um, somebody who applies all the methods of Lean and Six Sigma and Deming management principles, we can get to better and better performance. Thank you for your time.